in the lab by various scientists actually. This is ciguatoxin, this is taxol, the, the anti-cancer compound which is which uh, originally obtained from taxis brevifolia or pacific yew, the bark of the tree. But uh, K.C. Nikolaou is chemist, uh, he, in Scripps Research Institute, he has synthesized this one for the first time in 1994. And after that, many other people have synthesized. And Vinblastin is uh, again an anti-cancer compound from uh, Vinca rosea, the ornamental plant in your garden. This is again synthesized. And this is our own neem asa directa indica. The neem has asa directin, which was again synthesized by Professor Stephen Lay from Cambridge University. In the last, uh, uh, in 2007, he published a paper in Anguanda Shemi again. He, in the last uh, paragraph of his uh, paper, says that it has taken 22 years, 40 uh, PhD students over time, and 40 postdocs time for the synthesis of few milligram of this compound, 22 years, 40 students, 40 postdocs, and so much of money has gone to make few milligrams of this compound. Then, is that going to be a drug? No, that cannot be a drug. But we learn a lot of chemistry, that is true. By doing this, we learn new, new chemistry, which is good. But uh, this kind of synthesis is not going to solve our problems of medicine or anything else. So that is the time uh, Sharpless mentioned. There should be some chemistry which doesn't produce waste too much, ideally no waste. And it should not use any uh, bad solvent. It should, be a, it should be ideally solvent free, without solvent. If at all you use, use water as a solvent. Simple solvent, water, not at all corrosive. The regular biological solvent is water. So we should use such solvent and you should not heat the reaction uh, mixture actually. It should be facile at very low temperature. If you heat something, you are again generating, I mean, you are spending money on that. Right, if you want to heat a reaction, now you are talking about tons, right? Big, big tons of, uh, I mean, large uh, vessels actually. For that, electrical heating requires money actually. So, we don't want any of these things. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the guiding principle actually. When properties are our goal, such complicated synthesis is not justified. That's what I just told you. Properties, for example, medicine or a new material. When we want that, this kind of long synthesis cannot be, uh, 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 we can't use such a long synthesis, then it won't be worthy or economical. So this is uh, the time when Nobel Prize, he got the first Nobel Prize, Sharpless uh, talked about the click chemistry. He said, it is like clicking your buckle, right? This uh, belt buckle you're clicking or uh, clicking your car seat belt to the docket actually. So such clicking, the reaction should be like that, which doesn't produce anything, which uh, doesn't produce any waste actually. It should be such a simple reaction, which doesn't give any, any other uh, byproducts. And uh, it should be wide in scope, it should not be specific to one sp uh, particular kind of uh, set of molecules. It should be wide in scope and it should ideally give high yield actually, uh, no byproducts. If at all there are byproducts, it should be inoffensive, like water or some uh, something inoffensive is fine. And uh, which I, this I have already mentioned, the condition should be very simple reaction condition. You don't want to heat that, or you don't want to give additional pressure or any any other special condition for such reactions. And it should be insensitive to oxygen. And some reactions you heard of, uh, they require very special condition, like a blow box actually. When it comes in contact with the air, it will it'll, uh, spoil the reaction. It will react in a different way and you don't get the reaction uh, product which you wanted. Some are sensitive to moisture, some are sensitive to oxygen. So our reaction, the, the click reaction which we are talking about should not be, uh, I mean, should not uh, be sensitive to any of this thing, oxygen or air, air or even water. And it should be easy to isolate. Uh, Ideally, we should uh, avoid chromatographic purification. It should come out as crystallized or, or precipitated out. So these are the stable, it should be stable product. So that then the reaction should be like this, right, spring loaded. The moment it sees the other partner, it should react. So it should be ideally an exothermic reaction. 
So exothermic reaction means you release energy by doing that. You don't need to give heat actually or other modes of activation. So such reactions, so this is just a schematic actually you take the buckle and click it. Such reactions which doesn't produce much or no byproducts. So this is the, this is the, the concept he has introduced in 2000. He started working on this concept in 1999 onwards. And 2001 is the time he published this paper when he got his first Nobel Prize. And these are some of the reactions actually. So if you take an uh, alkene or alkyne, alkene can be easily converted to an epoxide actually, just by oxidation. And epoxide is of course, you know, it is trained molecule, right? The, though it is sp3 hybridized, the angle is strained actually. Each uh, internal angle is 60 degrees. So that means there is a strain actually. It want to release the strain by opening it up. So the moment it, uh, it sees a nucleophile, it opens up. So such reaction is a click reaction. So epoxide opening is a uh, click reaction. And this kind of uh, oxide formation. So if you, if you have hydroxylamine or alkoxylamine, this will immediately add to the carbonyl group and you get this kind of oxymes actually. This is also very easy reaction. But this is reversible at some time if you have water actually. And this is a deal salt reaction. Deal salt reaction, if it is really activated, you don't need heat actually. It will happen even at room temperature. And this is the azide alkane cycloaddition chemistry. People often confuse this as the click chemistry. This is one of the click chemistry. Click chemistry is a broader term. This involves more than this actually. I have shown you only four. There are other click chemistry, which some of the, which I will be talking soon. Thioline, for example, thiol adds to the alkene or alkyne. That is also a click chemistry, which doesn't produce any byproduct. So this is, people, as I said, this is the most often used uh, click chemistry, which has uh, many applications in many other fields than, than chemistry alone. So people often uh, uh, use this as uh, the click chemistry. So you should understand this is one of the click chemistry, not the click chemistry. Anyway. Actually, this chemistry, I'm talking about the azide alkane cycloaddition chemistry. This was uh, introduced long ago, actually, in 1963. This was a paper published by Rolf Huisgen, who has discovered this 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition reaction. Not only this one, many other 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition reactions. And uh, he, he passed away last year, actually, at the age of 99. Uh, uh, so, Unfortunately, he couldn't see the Nobel Prize in his own field, actually. So he just passed away last year. So he realized that when you heat azide and alkyne, it generates triosols. But you have two groups, right, R1 and R2. Now they can come parallel like this. The R group is here, R group is here, parallel. Or anti-parallel like this, before cycloaddition. So because of which you get a mixture of 1,4 and 1,5 isomers. And also, you require very high heat, very high temperature for this reaction, about 150 degrees centigrade. So these are two problems actually for that chemistry, which no one used actually. Though it was a good chemistry, I mean, you can cycloid and make an aromatic combo. copper catalysis and RCOCl, it will make a wine on if you have an alkyl. Unfortunately or fortunately in his peptide there was an azide at the other end actually. So instead of making wine on, he found that this is forming a cycloadduct which is the triosol. This was a serendipitous or accidental result for uh, Meldal actually. 
So he published that paper in GOC in 2001, uh, actually, sorry, 2002, in the month of April. And just a few months in July, there is another paper from Sharpless in Angola Academy. So that is in water. The previous uh, Meldel's work was in uh, organic solvents. In both cases, they have used copper one as the catalyst. So don't think that uh, Sharpless has taken idea from this published paper because this paper was submitted even before the acceptance of this uh, JOC paper actually. So uh, Sharpless was really working for Click. The other one got it as an accident. But both published in, in the gap of just two months actually. Copper one catalyzed cycloaddition. The beauty is that it reacts at room temperature. The problem is solved. Problem of the Huygens reaction is solved which requires very high temperature. Now you need only room temperature, even below room temperature this reaction can happen. And the other problem was the selectivity. You get two products in the Huygen reaction, but here only one, the one for disubstituted triazole. And uh, ambient condition and highly regiospecific reaction is really fast reaction. Very good. Yeah, th this is the one I was talking about. So this kind of peptide he was making, he wanted to introduce a wine on here and in the other part he had an uh, uh, azide and that reacted that led to this paper actually and this is the reaction which I was talking if you have RC or CL and that this kind of alkane in this is not C1 actually CU1 actually copper one if you have this will form this kind of wine on this is the non chemistry actually this is what he wanted but in his peptide uh, not in here actually there was another azide actually then that reacted actually So, the, when we do reactions, especially chemical reactions, we have several functional groups in many complex molecules, OH, NH2, amide, COH, all, all those things, right? So, when we do chemistry, it should be orthogonal to the other protecting groups or other functional groups, actually. It should not interfere with other chemistry, actually. So, that is what uh, uh, Sharpless has done here. So, he has checked with all kinds of functional groups. And he, he uh, reported that this is, this is a very, uh, very much okay to have any other functional group, this kind of reaction. This doesn't interfere, this particular reaction doesn't interfere with any other reaction. So it's a really an orthogonal reaction, you can say, with respect to other, other uh, protecting groups or even the functional groups or other chemistry in general. So that's very good. And also, this works both in organic solvent and also in water. So, now that is the time Bertossi, Garland Bertossi was talking, thinking about studying glycans. Our cell or any eukaryotic cell is completely covered with sugar actually. Our surface proteins actually, cell surface proteins are fully glycosylated. There is a really big sugar coat actually. So, we have about nine different sugar molecules in our, our body. Glucosamine, glu uh, N-acetyl glucosamine, glucose, mannose, N-acetyl mannose, amine, et cetera, fucose, et cetera, uh, sialic acid, nine sugars. And their random, uh, I mean, attachment will give a very, very complex glycan structure. And this glycan is really big, actually. Compared to the cell size, you have a really big, large coat of sugar and there are methods by which you can study proteins by tagging a GFP for example green fluorescent protein by genetically tagging a GFP to the protein of your interest you can have a, a, a fluorescent protein so the protein studying in cell is e easy actually that was another Nobel Prize few years ago for uh, uh, Roger Sin and uh, Yamamu, uh, 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 Yoshinori Yamamura, I think, yeah. So this, guy, so this is uh, easy. That is easy. Protein studying is easy. But how do you study, how do you tag a, a glycan, which is a sugar molecule, I mean, large sugar molecule. So she was uh, studying about that. And that is the time, that is the time this particular reaction was reported. So azide reacts with alkane to give a triazole linkage. Now you can introduce a fluorescent material 
to your cell with an alkyne for example but how to introduce an azide in your system if you have an azide in your sugar unit the sugar in the body actually somehow if you can introduce an azide in your body that azide then you can introduce a, a fluorescent tag with an alkyne then it should react in cell actually but the problem is you can't use copper catalysis in cell right in living cells how do you use copper copper is dangerous you can't use copper catalyst inside the cell actually so to to overcome that she has done something very interesting so this why do you want to study a particular protein or a particular sugar for example cell is full of chemicals right cell is full of proteins actually different proteins each of i assume this is this whole auditorium as a cell single cell each of you are different proteins actually and each of you have very different functions and it is possible to study one particular person's function using that gfp tagging similarly glycan tagging was difficult that is a take home message here actually that time so now she has done a literature search and she uh, uh, she saw this paper actually this was published even before who is gens paper actually this was just a cyclooctane cyclooctane react with rn3 i mean azide that will give this kind of triazole no catalyst is required the moment uh, cyclooctane meets an azide it reacts that's already known it's it's written by wittig actually you heard of wittig reaction right the same wittig has reported this reaction years ago actually so it's a strain promoted reaction because you know this this is what kind of hybridization is this one alkyne sp right sp means what is the geometry of that sp linear 180 is it 180 this this bond and this bond no that means what strain so it's a strained alkyne actually so the moment it reacts what is it becoming to this was sp sp now it is becoming to sp2 angle 120 this is okay close to that so there is a release of strain if you react right so that is the motto for this to react actually the moment it sees an azide it immediately reacts and release the release the strain because it is going to the sp2 system so this is like a spring spring loaded material actually you introduce strain in the cyclog time and now she has used this chemistry i mean introduced the cyclog time and made all this kind of uh, molecules to tag so now you can introduce for example whatever you want to tag to your sugar you can attach it for example a fluorescent material you can attach a fluorescein here actually if you want to attach a, a, a particular ligand for a protein for example biotin biotin if you attach covalent to that biotin will bind to sugar then you can of course study the by streptavidin biotin and streptavidin are really good pairs actually which bind each, to each other streptavidin is a protein and you can get a tagged streptavidin i mean gfp tagged streptavidin that means you can see coloration so in other words you can introduce any any tag it can be just a fluorescent tag or it can be a reporting tag sorry uh, targeting tag actually you, that i will come to later so now the challenge is here this probe attaching to the alkene is very easy it's a simple chemistry in a flask now introducing an azide to the cell is a chemist not a chemistry in the flask you can't do azidation in a in a flask actually in a living cell so now she has gone to the literature again now how the cell is synthesizing various sugars actually she has seen that for example as i said there are nine different sugars in our body the peripheral sugar is always sialic acid at the end on the surface it is sialic acid and sialic acid is synthesized from n-acetyl mannosamine 
by just an aldol reaction. Most of the reaction which we are talking about, there is some enzyme to do that such reaction in our body also. Aldol reaction happens in our body also. Diels salter reaction also happens in our body. There is Diels alterase actually. Uh, MPV oxidation happens in our body. Bare villager oxidation have MPV reduction. Uh, bare villager oxidation happens in our body. There is bare villager oxidase actually. Such enzymes are there which can do this kind of reaction in our body. So this is an aldolase reaction uh, enzyme which is which does aldol reaction. So it takes N acetyl minus, I mean this is the open chain form, this is, which is an aldohexose, right? So this is uh, aldehyde actually. And that reacts with pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid is another, another compound in our body. And they do aldol reaction and because of this aldol reaction you get sialic acid. Now she has solved the problem basically. Now to introduce for example an azide at this acetyl, N acetyl here, what do you do? You can also do this reaction. You can also think. How do you introduce an azide here? I thought you are good students. You would answer that. I, I have shown you the reaction. This is an acetyl manosamine. This is pyruvic acid and they are reacting and, and they are forming like this. And I haven't even color coded. The manos part is red and actually red here actually and the pyruvate part is black actually. So I want to introduce an azide here, acetyl. Instead of acetyl, I want acetyl. So how do we start with? Simple. No? Yeah, some of you answered that. You basically take manos with acetate, azide, acetyl manos which you can make in the lab and feed to the cell which you want. So you take acetyl mannose and give it to the cell or in the growth medium you introduce that and instead of mannose this cell will take that acetyl mannose and the same reaction will happen, acido, this aldolase reaction will happen and that will generate azide substituted sialic acid. So that is what she has taken, this is she started with n acetyl mannose, I mean, then uh, that was modified by the cell, by the cell machinery to make this kind of sialic acid with azide. Now she has, this one, this is a protein, this is the glyco part actually, sugar part. Now at the end you have azide actually. So you have exposed azide by using simple, simple, uh, we, are, we are exploiting the chemistry of the nature actually. The cell chemistry and introduced azide. Now, easy. Now, first paper, I, that the first 2004 Jax paper, this is what she has done. She has taken this as a alkyne, which will immediately react, and connected covalently to this, uh, this is the uh, uh, biotin actually. Biotin is connected, and the moment this is introduced to the cell, it micro-injected the first, for the first time, and it reacted, and that means this will be connected to the biotin part, covalently connected. Now the moment you attach, bring avidin or streptavidin which is connected to FITC, FITC fluorescein isothiocyanate which is fluorescent actually. So you have modif modified the FITC or uh, avidin with a fluorescent tag actually. That fluorescent protein if once you attach, the whole thing becomes glowed actually, fluorescent. This is the first paper on that. So yeah, this is the picture actually, the real live cell actually, you can see the fluorescent, the, the, the glycoproteins are at the cell surface, in the plasma membrane you can see this is the part where the glyco part is there. She has studied that for the first time. And people have introduced several other uh, octanes actually, this is much more strained actually than the previous one because there is also an sp2 center next to the sp sp actually so it's much more strained than the previous one so this is by Geeti and Boon. so this is another carbohydrate chemistry he has developed that many people have done that and in this case uh, they have studied fucosylation so fucosylation and at different points 
where is the fucus layer? And he has studied that fucus relation happens at the Golgi apparatus initially at the initial phase stages of the growth, then later move to different parts. This is the temporal positioning of different sugars, which could be studied by this chemistry. Same chemistry. Now, until now, she has done this chemistry in, in a cell, not an organism. Isolated cell, you can get cells, right? B different kinds of cell lines you can get. So now, she thought about doing reaction in a living organism. This is much more complex actually. Because in our living organism, there are n number of different cells and they have n number of different chemistry actually. All cells are not equivalent actually. So, how do you do reaction in a living organism? So, first she has used uh, zebra fish actually. Zebra fish is uh, an organism uh, which people usually use as a model organism because it is very transparent. You can observe uh, microscopically the, the changes actually. So, she has uh, introduced the same thing actually. This is again, this is n acetyl galactosamine. This is a different sugar. Again, aside is introduced here. Guys, you should not talk. When I talk, you should not talk. You will have time. Otherwise, you raise your hand and ask questions. Okay? So, so this time, they have used galactosamine. This is a different sugar. And azide is introduced. And you have micro-injected again the sugar into the embryo, actually. So, the fertilized embryo. And at different stages of its development of the zebra fish, they have studied where this particular galactose is going, and the cell galactosamine is going. And that is the time they understood. Initially, it is at the Golgi apparatus, then it is moving to the vacuoles, then it is going to the plasma membrane at different stages, actually. So, such a spatio temporal studies in what space and what length, I mean, time, where what kind of pro, uh, sugars are expressed. So this is the first study to study the, I mean, talking about the glycans actually. Glycans uh, change with time in a living organism. This was a science paper four years later actually, 2008. Yeah, so this is the same chemistry again. <laughs> the same chemistry, so how uh, it was introduced, micro-injected initially. Then that was uh, converted to, so the cell bi biosynthetic machinery converted it into a UDP sugar actually, UDP galenic, that is a donor actually. And that will, there are glycosyl transferases in our body and also zebra fish body or zebra fish cell. And that will introduce this kind of a, a sugar addition to proteins actually, that's how it works actually. So you are introducing only the sugar part. The rest is done by the rest of the chemistry introducing the, this is a leaving group actually, the, the UDP sugar, the UDP part. So that U, UDP part is added by another enzyme, then the reaction is done by another enzyme. So different enzymes do this reaction and finally it introduces this kind of uh, acido sugars. And later, uh, once it is done, we introduce our fluorescent tag with the alkyne, the cycloalkyne. That's how we study. This is another chemistry, not only cycloalkyne. This is what? This bond is what? Double bond, right? So this is a trans double bond. Trans cycloalkanes. Again, they are strained. Why they are strained? Engineering students can also tell this one, why they are strained. This trans is like this, right? This is strained because especially in a small ring like octane or below. Because you have already four carbons fixed at that position, right? The double bond, two carbons, then the connected two carbons, four carbons only. You have remaining carbons to connect these two ends. So that means it's a, not enough actually to have proper unstrained way. So that is strained actually. This is a transcycloalkane is also strained. And this is what uh, people have used. And this is another chemistry. This kind of uh, tetracine. This is called tetracine. Once you introduce tetracine, they will undergo Diels-Alder reaction first. 
this is the diene part, this is the dienophile part, and they will undergo a Diels-Hall reaction. Then you get a bicyclic system, of course, you know what. Then again, it will undergo a retro Diels-Hall reaction, reverse of the Diels-Hall reaction, eliminate a molecule of nitrogen, and you get to that. And this is how it forms. First Diels-Hall reaction followed by a retro Diels-Hall reaction, you get to that. So this means you can connect this part to this part. So click is essentially that, connecting two parts actually. Whichever part you want to connect, you can connect. Okay, lot of application in various other fields, so which uh, we'll uh, talk about soon. Let's see in medicine how it has this particular chemistry. So the uh, at the introduction, uh, the, the introducer talked of we should address how this has this particular chemistry has influenced other branches of science. Let us see how it has influence medicine for example. So a drug discovery of course uh, I know most of you are pharmaceutical chemists, uh, I mean pharmacy students, some of you at least. So this is the process actually, you find a disease and you find a drug target which is usually a protein or nucleic acid sometimes, then develop an assay, how to read out actually whether it's binding or not binding, then you find, make a library of molecules, large library of molecules is required to get a get a drug actually. We start with the crores of molecules to end up with one or two final molecules actually. So that is a challenge for the chemist actually to make large number of library to start with what the initial screening. Then lead identification, you, you find some are having some interaction with this particular protein of your interest which is the drug target. Then you optimize the lead by by making tweaking the structures and then it goes to the preclinical trials in the rats and uh, other organisms to see its uh, toxicity profile for example. Then it goes to, if it succeeds there it goes to the clinical trials, phase one in healthy volunteers, phase two in uh, uh, actually patients in a small number, phase three in a large patient, a large number of patients, even phase four also after introduction to the market actually. So this is how it, uh, it goes and it takes about 12 to 15 years a uh, drug discovery and it costs like close to 10,000 crores of rupees. Okay, or to introduce one drug to the market it approximately costs 10,000 crores of rupees actually. That's why it's not easy to get a uh, drug into the market actually. So previously our sources of drug were natural products. These are all drugs you already know. For example, epibatidin is a epibatidin is a drug for a, it's an analgesic actually, painkiller. This is collected from the skin of that African frog, and this is taxol that which I have talked about. This is the broad spectrum anti-cancer compound which is isolated from taxis brevifolia. This is a painkiller again, morphine which is isolated from opium poppy actually. Then. This is a spider lily uh, which gives a pancreatic statin which is a drug for uh, breast cancer in the phase 3 clinical trial actually. And this is windblast again from Vinca rosia for cancer again. And this is an antibiotic from this particular mushroom. And of course penicillin we know from penicillin again another fungus actually. So these were usually our sources of drugs initially. But isolation of the such material is very very tedious actually. Each plant has about more than 10,000 different compounds in the secondary metabolites and isolating them, purifying them is a Herculean task. So that is not the easiest way. So people now don't do this kind of plant-based drug discovery. They don't isolate material from plant and do the drug screening actually. Nowadays people, the chemistry has improved. I mean uh, our chemistry strength has improved. So we can make library of molecules, random library of molecules or a, or a specific set of library of molecules or uh, you can say uh, in a chemical space you can go to any, any direction and make all, all kinds of molecules using different chemistry. And one such chemistry is for that this click chemistry is very important. If you have a pharmacophore, non-pharmacophore for a particular, particular protein of interest, you can tag with another pharmacophore. Pharmacophore binding is a new concept in drug discovery actually. So you can attach them very easily using click chemistry. And also you can make a library of compound. For example, I have shown a schematic actually different uh, five alkane and five azide. 
if you mix them all them all of them in a single pot all of them undergo click reaction you will get 25 products actually if you have a matrix of 10 then you will have 100 molecules actually in one go and the, the way we test is uh, initially as a mixture and whichever mixture is having some activity then individually we test that is how we test actually not all the individual one crore of molecule testing is difficult even in high throughput screening system so this is one of the ways actually it takes a group of 10 or group of 100 even then mild right some activity then you choose that particular group and then individualize this is how we do one one method is that so easy to make this kind of common in one day you can make even 10,000 molecules actually. if you have 100 100 versus 100 metrics 10,000 molecule in one reaction actually, which people don't use actually because 10,000 is a problem actually then then how do you identify the one which is very important actually so usually 25 those are the usual usual uh, system combinator library so this chemistry has improved actually because no no byproduct you don't need to purify anything because you have uh, usually it's very easy reaction just to remove the copper most of the time the compound can be precipitated or crystallized <coughs> this is an example in the real uh, drugs uh, discovery this is Amprenavir is a HIV protease inhibitor. This is for uh, AIDS actually. AIDS uh, a patient, this, uh, this is a drug already known. So based on that structure, because people often say that amide and triazole are isosteric and also isoelectronic they say because it, this can also give that, that hydrogen is a H, H is really acidic and it can participate in hydrogen bonding. So a, a triazole is very similar to a peptide bond actually or an amide bond. So they have, uh, there is a peptide bond, they have chained that peptide bond using this kind of triazole. And this is, this is the cue initially started from this and they made a different library and finally reached here. This is much more potent than that original molecule. This is taking cue from the structure we have, uh, our chemists have made new structures for better Better, uh, uh, better activity actually. One example. This is uh, another example. Uh, this is this is called Chagas disease, caused by Trypanosoma cruzi. This is a protozoa very similar to, very similar to our Plasmodium. This was also the life cycle part time in the fly, part time in our body, in the RBC actually red blood cells actually very similar to protozoa uh, the the uh, uh, parasite for the malaria right plasmodium so but we have immune system any foreign particle comes to our body we have our immune system which is very strong which will kill if uh, some bacteria comes to our body our immune system immediately react so some virus comes to our body our, our immune system react so how this awaits actually that is this this parasite is so brilliant so this is human cell this is again schematic as i mentioned human human cell have sialic acid at the, at the periphery sialic acid the glucose the sugar parasite doesn't have that sialic acid so then when the parasite enters our immune system immediately recognize this is not our guy for example all of you are with the uniform for example, this college has a uniform and somebody coming without a uniform and immediately you recognize that this person is from this, not from this university. Similarly, our immune system immediately recognize this, this cell is not our cell, this is not human cell and it will kill. But before that, this parasite does what? This will steal our sialic acid and put it on it. In other words, the, the guy who is coming beat you and one of you and take your shirt and put it on that then the immune system cannot recognize that. This is how this parasite arrives, our immune system. That's how it lives in our body and complete the life cycle. Now the drug for that is what? Simple. There is an enzyme which steals this sugar. So we have to inhibit that particular enzyme that is called trans transferase. That particular enzyme which steals our sialic acid and put it on that parasite body. And that's what Robert Field 
Robert Field from the, uh, East Anglia actually, uh, is a carbohydrate chemist. He has made a click library using this kind of simple glycosyl sugar, actually galactosyl sugar, with a lot of alkynes. And this is a schematic actually, this is the transialyl transfer, is the enzyme which steal this carbohydrate. The blue one is an enzyme, okay, like only schematic. So this is very important, this is the parasite cell with the galactose. Parasite has galactose at the periphery. Now this is our cell having sialic acid. And this kind of binding at the, at the reaction center is very important. This also has to bind, this also has to bind. Then only the transfer will happen. Now it will transfer to here. That is what is the chemistry there. Now what he has done is, he made this particular molecule. This is a click product. And this goes and bind here. So that this cannot come here. This has to come for the stealing. That stealing is blocked by making a mimic of that. And this is a drug under clinical trial for this particular Chagas disease, actually, by Robert Field. These are approved drugs actually in the market using click chemistry. This is, for example, this is a blood thinner actually for those who have problem with the blood clotting. So this case, this is a drug. This is called Tisagrella. This is. You can see the, uh, the triazole linkage here. This is an antibiotic. Again, you can see a triazole linkage here. And this is another one. This is an anti-convulsant for a treatment of epilepsy, which is again in the market, rufinamide actually. This is again click chemistry product. And this one, this is for a bacterial infection for pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia. This is again, you can see the one for dye substituted click product there. This is the drug in the market actually. And this is another one which is having two such units for uh, uh, pulmonary fibrosis. These are already drugs in the market using click chemistry. So now you see that this has a lot of application. In small span of time I told the drug discovery takes all, close to 15 years actually. And this chemistry came only just 20 years ago. In 2001 is the first report. So already you, you have seen drugs in the market actually. So see, this is such a powerful powerful uh, methodology which has which has found application at least in in uh, drug discovery for example. This again it's not this the list is really long actually. This is for uh, different kinds of cancer actually again in the phase 2 clinical trial. This is not in the market. This is with the patient actually now. This is with a large group of patients he is being tested for particular uh, adenocarcinoma, lung cancer, renal cancer, etc. And this is for breast cancer actually, this is in the market actually. This is already in the market again, breast cancer drug. And this is another one for anemia. So this is, a, sorry, this is in phase 3 clinical trial, not in the market yet. Maybe next year or so, this will be in the market. So similarly, this is antibiotic. This is again for anemia. This is for pain. All these are in the market, these three are in the market actually. So there are several drugs, not only I have collected only a few actually to show you the importance actually. So vancomycin, so this is another application. Vancomycin is an antibiotic actually. Vancomycin has a sugar unit, a disaccharide unit here. But the problem with bacteria are they, they develop microbacterial resistance. So any drug you introduce into the market or into the system, bacteria develop immediately the resistance actually. Because partly because of our problem, we don't take the full course, full course of antibiotics. We stop when the symptom is reduced, still bacteria is in our body. So the bacteria is, the, 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 the strong bacteria are coexisting with the drug and they slowly de develop resistance to that particular drug. That's how bacterial resistance is being generated. So we are also party to that. So each time bacteria develop a resistance, we cannot make new, new drugs, right? That, the, it's very tedious making new drugs. So this is one approach actually, glycorandomization. You change the glycosyl part. You have two sugar units. You change the glycosyl part by click chemistry. So you introduce an azide here in the first glucose. Here, this is the glucose unit. Now, every time you want to make it, you put a new new sugar actually, we're using click chemistry. So, that's easy actually. So, such a randomization, you randomize the 
glycosyl part. A glycon part is same. Glyco part you can randomize using click chemistry. This is being done actually. And uh, cancer, uh, people are trying for getting a cancer vaccine. In most of the cancer, this particular sugar, n acetyl galactosamine, most of the protein get glycosylated with n acetyl galactosamine. We have n acetyl galactosamine. A normal range. But in cancer, in all the cancers, this particular sugar will be too much in all the proteins actually. Wherever serine, threonine are there, this will be there actually. So, this can be possibly an antigen to develop antibody in our body. Or in other words, if you make something like this, a, a, a sugar conjugate having several N-acetyl galactosamine that can be introduced into our body as a vaccine. People, Danishevsky is trying for this kind of research for a long time. So again, he uses click chemistry. So he take a peptide. You need a carrier to take this kind of glycosylates. So an yeah, array of glycosylates is required. Not one is enough. So this kind of, uh, this is a non-peptide actually, which, uh, which is harmless. And he introduced this kind of uh, al alkyne. Then introduced this using chemistry, click chemistry. And he is trying for making cancer vaccine using this chemistry. Yeah, this is for HIV vaccine. Again, HIV, HIV has a protein called GP120, glycoprotein 120 in its surface. So that is uh, this MAN9 actually. Manos, N-acetyl manos, I mean, nine of them in that periphery of that particular protein. So now people are taking this kind of manos units as a possible vaccine candidate. If you have such manos, I mean, several of them, nine more or even four more is enough actually. People have recently found that just four manos connected is enough to generate antibody. So people are making this kind of cyclic peptide and making this kind of tetramanos, I mean, as a possible, possible uh, vaccine against HIV using click chemistry. The click is the one which is connecting the peptide to, peptide is the carrier, peptide to the sugar part. That is uh, similar. So this is uh, another interesting, this is in the finish, uh, phase two clinical trial. This is for cancer actually. This is the other chem click chemistry, which is the tetracin click chemistry, which I talked about. Tetracin with the alkene actually. This is the trans double bond. So how does it, this is a, this is a cancer drug already, non-cancer drug, doxorubicin. So that one, is connected to this particular click partner, the trans octene. Now this is not a drug. When it is connected to this particular part, this is not a drug. This doesn't kill. You have seen people undergoing cancer treatment, they become very weak actually. They lose their hair. Their immune system becomes so bad. Why? Because this is not very selective to cancer cell. All the cancer drugs are going to all other cells and killing. All the cancer drugs kills the cell. That is the mechanism. So it kills all, not only the cancer cells, also the normal cells. Selectivity is a big issue in cancer therapy. So that's why cancer patients have this problem. They lose uh, immunity and they become weak and all those things. So now this is for a specific, only cancer specific therapy actually. How does it do? So you introduce this one into your uh, body injection for example this is not a drug I mean this doesn't kill any cell actually once it is conjugated now the moment this particular one is connected this will release the drug actually after the click it will release I will show you the mechanism actually yeah it's here if you if you can see that it is really bad uh, I mean the projection is really uh, not good actually. So here for example after clicking there is an electron push from here and from here and which release the drug actually. So basically after clicking only that possibility is there. It, it releases the drug. So now this is a this is a hyaluronate it is a polymer actually sugar polymer which is not bad actually. Like a heparin sulfate this is also another polymer of sugar which is in our body. 
So this you can introduce to that particular polymer which is not bad. So now first you introduce the whole pro drug actually which is not harmful to the whole body. Now wherever cancer is there, you, you inject this particular polymer. For example, if the cancer is in the particular part of the body, for example hand, you introduce this one as an injection to the hand. Then it will react only there. The doxorubicin connected one is reacting there only and it releases only there. So the rest of the body is safe actually. So it's a targeted delivery of drug actually using this click chemistry. This is in phase 2 actually where Carolyn Batosi is the advisor of this company actually. It is not her chemistry. It is one of the click but it's similar to her idea. That's why she is in the board actually and it is in phase 2 clinical trial for site specific cancer therapy. Yeah, this is uh, very similar to that. Here, uh, here it's a different approach actually. So in uh, cancer, there are some enzymes which are overexpressed. For example, topoisomerase, because you need faster multiplication. So topoisomerase is something which is required for DNA splitting actually, right? I mean, for the multiplication. So that is overexpressed in all cancer cells. So now, if you introduce an antibody connecting to the top isomerase. Antibody is the one which binds to that, right? Specifically bind to top isomerase. So you can generate that. Now to that you can attach this kind of optin also by using normal chemistry. Then to that you can attach a drug, for example any drug, doxorubicin or uh, whatever, this I don't know which drug they have used it here particularly. So they can introduce a drug also, which is not a drug anymore because it is connected. Then you introduce into your system, IV, intravenous. It will go to where? It will go to only cancer cell. Why? Because you have antibody for topoisomerase. Topoisomerase is more in cancer cells. So that will selectively go to that particular cell. Then later you in inject again the other partner to release the click. Once it is clicked, it will release there. First you take the target to go to specifically to cancer cells. Then introduce the other partner to click release then it release at the site and release here this is the other other partner once it goes to the cancer cells and bind there then you introduce the tetracine then tetracine bind and it undergoes click chemistry and release the drug so in polymer synthesis for example now let us come to another field polymer polymer this uh, this chemistry has uh, done a lot of things in polymer actually. Polymer for example you have hydrophobic polymer, hydrophilic polymer. If you want to make an amphiphilic polymer just click them together. So that's very easy actually. Now using click chemistry you introduce one azide, one alkane and click them and you have polymer with better functionality, better property. And all kinds of polymer people have made. This is using click chemistry. You can see you can have even this particular linkage, the triazole linkage in the backbone actually. So taking a diiron and diazide. The new chemistry, right? Previously we had diamine and dicarboxylic acid for making nylon kind of polymer. Now you use diazide and dialkyne. That will make a backbone polymer. Then this kind of alkane polymer we can make, alkane attached polymer we can make and later connect if you want glucose there for example. You want to make a hydrophobic styrene for example, styrene is, I mean, polystyrene is hydrophobic actually, it will not dissolve in water. But if you want to make it water soluble, what do you do? Attach sugar. So how do you attach? So you make a polystyrene with an azide or alkyne and introduce the sugar with azide or alkyne, the, the complementary partner. So then you will have a lot of sugars on the, the polymer and it will become soluble. So such a change of functionality is possible and this kind of uh, star polymer, different kinds of structurally different polymer. For example, graphene or uh, carbon nanotube. This is carbon nanotube. This is fuller. This is graphene. Easy to introduce azide actually. There are methods to introduce azide. You can make an epoxide and open the epoxide with an azide. And to that you can attach a polymer. They will have different functionality. This is mainly for physics and other material science. And they have a lot of application especially for electronics and other other conducting properties etc.
So, so applications of click, click. So the what is the limit? Limit is only your imagination. What you can do with chem click chemistry? If you want combine two functionality, two property in a paint, for example, in paint you have hydrophobic material, then colorant you have, then adhesive, all those things. If you if you have an idea to combine all these things using click chemistry, it's possible. Of course, we have to try whether it is still functional having all this property. But so idea is the limit actually for click chemistry. Whatever you want to link. Now, for example, if you want to deliver a drug specifically to mitochondria or specifically to endoplasmic reticulum or specifically to nucleus, there are small peptides which are targeting to these kind of organelles actually. We know that already. Mitochondria trackers are there, which goes only to mitochondria. Now, if you want to take, for example, some of the drugs has to reach mitochondria, especially cancer drugs. So, how you take? So, it attach the mitochondria tracker by click chemistry to the drug, and it will selectively go to that, even to the compartment. Actually, the the example I have talked about is going to the specific tissue. Now, you are talking about in a cell, actually, wherever you want, in a specific compartment that is possible, and that is being done actually not only in medicine to study the importance of various organelles their chemistry people are using tags different fluorescent tags etc using simple chemistry this is much more better than using a gfp tag for, to study proteins actually gfp tag is uh, having 238 amino acid acuria victoria that protein gfp green fluorescent protein is 238 amino acid 200 kilo dalton actually so that means it's a very heavy material. If I am a protein, if you want, if you all want to study my function, if you attach another person like me, which is color colored, I cannot function properly, right? Because he is heavy. I have to I have to pull him all the work. I go. So that's a problem. So you don't get really the original functionality when you tag GFP with a protein actually, especially when the protein becomes small. Now, click chemistry is very easy. You can have a very small fluorescein molecule or a, or a other tagging molecule or a reporter molecule to protein by using this chemistry and without affecting the functionality much. So, the, the opportunities are huge actually. This is still a growing field. Some of the applications I have shown here, plastics and pharmaceutics, DNA sequencing, I have not talked about it. There are a lot of application medicine. Library of molecules I have talked about. You can make library of molecules using this chemistry. Drug leads, cancer vaccines are already in the market. So any two covalent entities, any two chemical entities can be covalently connected. Imagination is the limit. That's what I that's where I want to stop. Bioorthogonal chemistry, of course, a GPS tracker to the molecule actually. This is this is what I have told you. This is like a GPS tracker. You can track me by putting a GPS tracker on me here, anywhere on earth. But you can track any biomolecule, whether it is a protein or a small molecule or anything else in a biological system by using this click chemistry. For diagnosis and therapy, I have shown already that uh, cancer drug specific one. Yeah, conclusion is click chemistry is unarguably a simple and but very powerful tool that address problems in various branches of science. Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, I'll be happy to take any questions. The floor is open for questions. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. A very good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my questions are two questions. One is you were talking about uh, the pro drugs and their delivery. So I was just wondering only applicable to the carrier drugs is it limited to especially with respect to the anti-neoplastic type of drugs 
or uh, like uh, we have now as you said we are now changing from derivatizing from the plant extract to actually seeing the activational part where the anti metabolites is what i'm actually thinking is that possible for anti cancer drugs yeah, yeah. i think uh, i have answered that actually some of the slides i mean two slides I have a completely devoted for drug molecules out of click chemistry there are drug molecules on its own which came out of click chemistry or this type of chemistry nucleotide activation yeah? nucleotide and phosphorylation activated type nucleotide and phosphorylation activated type no i i don't know which uh, uh, which pathway it is acting okay. yeah. so i have shown you some examples of drugs which is already in the market yeah. which is a purely drug actually it's not a uh, uh, what is it the tracker okay. or uh, the other one, the, the inactivated type, pro drug. Yeah, yeah not a pro drug actually. Okay. It is actual drug. Okay. And also the randomization of uh, vancomycin, like a randomization. Another example which you are mentioning about, you can make a library of from existing drug, for example, you can change slightly the structure and get a new drug actually. People are doing a lot of that. The one of the uh, uh, anti uh, HIV drug is that actually, yes, yes, Ampranavir actually. So second question is, uh, uh, can we also have click chemistry wherein we are talking about the speciation and free radicals which are generated for the environmental that is uh, volatile organic matters. Can there also we can see the uh, speciation that tagging, especially the tagging part of how the speciation is occurring if we are targeting the volatile organics, is it applicable there also? So the problem would be uh, once you tag, we don't know whether that will be volatile because this is huge, right? So, so volatility of that material is an issue then because that's a new entity actually. It's a chemically connected bond which is having a triazole, aromatic triazole and something else at the other side. We don't know whether that will be really volatile. And even, even if it is volatile, can we translate that to the original molecule? That I don't know. That's a tough, tough job. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. For coming to the university. Thank you for the invitation, sir. Sure, sure. So, as you were mentioning about the polymers, applications in polymers, of course, you know that I am. Can I request the audience to be silent? Uh, polymers, you said uh, for solubilizing. Uh, the hydrophobic polymers, you can make it. We, we have been making use of, for example, polystyrene, polyethylene glycol. Yes. The section, uh, condensation. Uh, so, uh, I was wondering, when you just look at this, uh, a, so suppose A polymer, A, polymer a, a, uh, a segment, which is hydrophobic, B segment, which is hydrophilic, and then whether we can have a polycondensation uh, using click chemistry. Poly condensation, not just m making A B by clicking, yes. but A B A B A yeah. B. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's what the first. Uh, you understood? You yeah, 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 yeah. I understood. I understood. Because in, in co -poly poly poly basically copolymer. Copolymer. Co -polymer. Yeah, A B copolymer. That's uh, that's o alternating copolymer. Yes, this one, for example, the first one. This one is that actually. This is a diazide. This is a dialkane. Click chemistry, they made the backbone actually. Alternate AB, AB, AB. It's AB, AB. Yes. So it's this, yeah, there are many actually. This is the first report which I have taken. There are many other reports actually. So people have made even gly ethylene glycone and hydrophobic unit yeah. and made a AB polymers. Because we, uh, in, in uh, making hydrophilic polymers, you know, for particularly uh, suiting the requirements of biological conditions, we have been trying polyethylene glycone condensation with polystyrene. Okay. Just to make, uh, just yes. to make, uh, uh, for example, synthesis happens much more easily when it comes to yes. optimal hydrophilic environment. So yes. this is this is happening. No? Yes, yes. So there are many reports. Actually. This is the first one. There are many reports, but this, of course, is in the uh, almost the heterocyclic system. Some sort of a heterocyclic system. Even uh, with the ethylene glycol attaching dye. Okay. And uh, so uh, general, I was just thinking simple, simple poly condensation whether we can. Yes. Probably there have been attempts. I'll look into it. Right? Thank you very much for giving an overview of click chemistry. Thank you.
Professor Shivaram is here before you would like to see him. Oh, he's here? He's here today. Yes. Oh, okay. You worked in NCL? Yeah, I worked in NCL. There are no more questions. On behalf of the Somaya community, may I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Raj Shagram Pillay, to please felicitate our guest, Dr. Kara Sureshan, sir, please. He is also the brainchild be uh, behind the Nobel Prize Lecture Series. Now may I request Dr. Veena Khilani, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, to please deliver the vote of thanks. Hello all. On behalf of the Somaya Vidyavihar Institutes, I have the pleasant task of proposing the vote of thanks to our guest speaker, Dr. Kana M. Sureshan, for the talk on the impact of click chemistry on modern chemistry, modern science. We thank you, sir for sharing all the information on these topics in such an organized, lucid way in uh, enriching us for our understanding on the history, the meaning, the origin, the properties, the mechanism, and also the application for so many examples. So you explain uh, all these strategies towards the path of the Nobel uh, Prize win award, award prize. And uh, you covered the journey of three researchers independently who worked independently towards a common goal. And the applications were also varied. You cited so many examples. And as you said, imagination is the limit. So there is so much of click chemistry happening around us. And thanks for enriching us with these examples. A special thank you to our Vice Chancellor, Professor V. N. Rajshekran Pillai, for ideating this event. This lecture series is one of a kind and it is a perfect way to inspire our young research minds. I take this opportunity to thank our Chancellor, Sri Samir Somaya, Provost Dr. Raghunath Shevgaukar, management and all top tier administrators for their constant support towards such activities. Our sincere gratitude for the efforts of Dean Research and Director Sirak, Dr. Mayur Yergiri, Assistant Director Sirak, Dr. Parvati and Team Sirak for making this idea happen. I take the liberty I take the liberty to thank my principal, Dr. Pradnya Prabhu, for giving me this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks today. We appreciate the patient and interactive participation of all the students and faculty of various Somaya communities present here today. Yes, clap for yourselves. <laughs> the support staff are the silent arms for the smooth conduct of any event. We acknowledge the regular support of Sri Ashok Kundar and his team for the auditorium booking along with the necessary logistics, general studio for the mic and technical assistance, our studio for the furniture requirements, Sri Amai Rane of our IT team for coordinating with the Jinnal Studio to make this event stream live on YouTube. And the PR team for the flyer design and the promotional activities. My sincere apologies in case I missed out on any names who have directly or indirectly 
contributed to make this event a great success. Thank you to all. Thank you, everyone. I mean, you had a wonderful session here, and you have learned a lot of take-home messages. Click chemistry is giving you an unimaginable power. But just two more uh, take-home messages for you. Being patient is virtue. Being mindful of an occasion that you're an audience and you're listening to an expert lecture must be a character that you should inherit. And being respectful to the speaker and his occasion rather than discussing among your friends is something I hope you won't repeat it again. Thank you all.